Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we've got the privilege of taking on the latest puzzle by the brilliant constructor Codec. Um, now, Mark sent me this puzzle this morning and I immediately rang him to complain because I said he must have missed off a rule. Um, he says he hasn't. So this puzzle apparently has a unique solution with just four little killer clues outside the grid and some grey cells that have to contain odd digits in the grid. Now, that is quite, quite extraordinary. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see what this, this means later, but I, I assume Mark is not telling tales. Um, the puzzle is called Little Nuts. Why are you laughing about that? I'm not, I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. It's called Little Nuts. Um, anyway, anything else to mention before we kick off? Yes, on Patreon, um, we've had more correct solvers for Matthias Martinka's incredible puzzle hunt. If you've not had a go at it, please have a go. You really won't regret it. Um, I'm very well done to Scott Bathurst, Fiona, uh, John Andrew McCulloch, and oh, not forgetting Dylan Fitzpatrick, who um, I should have read the name out the other day of Dylan. Uh, Dylan, apologies. I don't know how I missed your name off, but you did solve it uh, many days ago. So Dylan Fitzpatrick, well done to you as well. Um, and anything else? Yeah, well, don't forget, we are we have this murder mystery Sudoku hunt ready to go now, created by Alice and others over on Discord. Um, it is quite a beautiful set of puzzles all linked by a, a sort of a really good story and in fact I'll, I'll teaser i'll teaser the first puzzle alice makes puzzles that look so beautiful look at this um you, without the rules it'll be hard to solve that but i just thought i'd show you it because it is gorgeous um so yeah we're going to reach that when we reach uh 5, patrons over on patreon so if you've ever considered becoming a patron of the channel um do have a look over there there's so much extra content we do try and make it worthwhile and it does mean that we can continue to do what we're doing which is fantastic so let's read the rules of codex codex little nuts puzzle um normal sudoku rules apply clues outside the grid give the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal and digits may repeat along these diagonals if allowed by other rules uh digits in cells containing a gray circle must be odd so let's have a look at a little killer clue and think about what that means. So those cells, how many are there? Seven cells along this diagonal have to sum to 55 and we can repeat digits. So if that square was um, an eight, you could have an eight there. You can't have an eight here then because obviously that breaks the rules of Sudoku, uh, but you could put another eight there, etc. So do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, now, let, well, let's actually have a look at this 55 diagonal again, I think, because that's very high for seven cells. So it's averaging very close to eight. And that means that hmm, it's, it might be averaging very close to eight, but it doesn't mean that we can actually put any digits on it, I don't think. Right. And, but it is... Okay, I'm wondering now whether there's a tension between either the 13 or the 15 diagonal, or perhaps both. In fact, that 15 diagonal is remarkably long for having have, having to sum to 15. That's seven cells that sum to 15. So this diagonal has an average of very close to two. Oh, I see. And it intersects with this diagonal, which has to have a very high average. So there's all sorts of tension on this square. Um, does the 13, a 13 also, ah, right, okay. So I suspect what we have to do here is to think about the interaction, possibly of the 31 diagonal as well. Let's have a look at what's going on on all of these diagonals together. So often in little killers, especially if they're difficult little killers, it will be an interaction of the clues that we'll have to focus on. So let's just highlight all of those. Um, now, how's the, what's the best way to do this? The 55 and the 31, that's 86. Ah, I need different colors here. Need different colors. Let's change the color of the small diagonals. Um, let's change those to something more, uh, or different to purple. So the 
purple cells add up to 86. Ah, now we're going to keep going with colouring here. The intersection cells are not relevant in a sense. What do I mean by not relevant? Well, what I mean is that these orange cells don't account for the difference between the purple diagonal or the 55 and the 31 diagonal and the 13 and the 15 diagonal. Because these, these count in both diagonals, they don't account for any difference between the 55, the 31, the 13 and the 15. Now 13 and 15 is 28. These ones were 86. 58 is the difference, I think. So the difference between the purples and the greens is 58. Because we can ignore the oranges. 58 seems absurdly high. So presumably we've got to try and max out the purples and minimise the greens. Um, now that is going to be a little bit complicated because lots of these purples have... Uh, yeah, they either share rows or share columns. So we're going to have to try and work out what the maximum total we can put in the purples is. So we could put 8, 9 in this column, couldn't we? So that would be 17. We could put 8, 9 in this column. That would be another 17. We could put 8, 9 in this column. That would be another 17. So, so far we're up to 3 lots 17 is 51. Um, this one I think can just be 9. I don't think that's being affected by anything. This one is very annoyingly in the same row as this one. Right, okay, so if I'm going to max out the value I see, so we need to think about those three squares together, I think. So if I'm going to maximise these three squares together, what I have to do is to put nines in those two. So this has to be an eight, because if this is, if this is a nine, those two squares are restricted to eight. Whereas I can do much better than that by making this an 8 and making those two 9. So I think it's something like this is the maximum. So I've no idea what this adds up to. This adds up to, um, what do those three add up to? 26, uh, 35, 35 and two lots of 17. So 35 and 34 is 69. Um, so purples add to 69. What were we aiming for? We were aiming for 58. Oh, this is, have I made a mistake here? Oh dear. So I've probably got the maths wrong. I don't, can we keep those green squares down to 11? That seems incredibly unlikely. And maybe we can actually, maybe, in fact, it might actually be identical logic because those two squares have a minimum value of three. If I make them one and two, those two squares have a minimum value of three. And these two squares have a minimum value of three. So these squares together that I've just pencil marked in total nine, which implies we need double one in these squares. Uh, it's the same. It's this square that's interesting this time. If this square is a 1, those two squares become 2, and you can't get to 11, which you need to get to. So that's got to be a 2, I think. That's a 1. That's a 1. And now I need this to be a 1, and I think we have got 11, haven't we? We've got, we've got 5 there, and then 3 there, and 3 there, which is 11. So this is it's, it's a it's sort of max-min problem. Um, and we have solved it, I think, because now we know that the purples have to be maxed and that to be maxed, we have to make this square an eight. The greens have to be minned and to make them minimum, we had needed a two here. And now what do we do? We should, can I resolve any of these? One, twos, eight, nines. That's the question we should ask now. 
I've got a horrible feeling I'm meant to know the answer to this. And the answer is probably yes. And I should know how to make the answer yes. And I don't. Oh dear. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry if everyone's shouting at me. I really... I don't enjoy being shouted at, whatever you may think. I think some of you think that every day I must enjoy it somehow, vicariously being shouted at, but... Um, hmm. Oh, bobbins. Right, okay, so what else can we do? Do we have to do Sudoku? Ones, maybe. Ones are a bit restricted in box two by Sudoku. And you put one on this diagonal. Um... Ah, no, you can't. You can't put a one there. If a one goes there, the other six cells on the diagonal have to be have well have to be nines because six nines are fifty four. There is a knowledge bomb for you from cracking the cryptic. So, and you can't put um, you can't put two nines in those squares because that will break box six. So there's no one here apart from me. I mean, there's no one in this cell in the Sudoku. So. So ones are in one of those two positions in box two, which means ones are in two positions in box one. Um, ah, so I can do, right, I can do exactly the same trick in box six, because these ones pinch those squares. That can't be a one, it's in a row with a one, two pair. If this was a one, you'd need six nines on the diagonal. You can't put two nines in box two. So what does that actually leave? That leaves ones in these two squares, which means ones go in those two squares. Oh, okay. Uh, now let's keep going with, ah, ones here then. So again, this can't be a one because it's in a row with a one and a two. Now, can that be a one? That's in the 31 diagonal. Um, Oh, no, actually, hang on, this is this is not as good, is it? Because those three squares could, for example, add up to 24 if, if they're 3 eighths. And that would mean those two squares have to add up to 7. And if, in fact, 7 is the absolute maximum these squares add up to because anything else is taking you know obviously if this is a nine or this is a nine we need less than seven in those two squares so it's quite likely this is a one. Oh no this is not what i was expecting at all um okay and is it the same down here then Yes, it is. Okay, so I think I've run out of the run out of road with the with the ones. I think we're going to have to look. Well, nines. Let's look at nines then. Can we do something similar with nines? Nines. Um, well, nine can't go there because there's an eight nine pair in row six. I'm tempted to say nine can go here because that's not going to break the 55 diagonal. Oh, no, I see it breaks the 15 diagonal. Good grief, this is really clever. I keep missing which diagonal it is I'm meant to be focusing on. But look, if you put a nine on this diagonal, there are six other digits, all of which have to be one, and you get a repeated one in box eight, and I bet it's the same on this diagonal. Can you put a nine here? No, you can't. You, you just can't do it here. There's already a two here. Um, so these squares, all five of those squares would have to sum up to four. That just doesn't work. So no, I think nines are going to be restricted in these two boxes. Let's check that out. So nine can't go on the diagonal. Can't go here because of the eight nine pair. So nine is in one of two places, which means nine is in one of two places in box three. Now in this box, nine is not here because of the 13 diagonal. It's not, ah, look, we're gonna get a digit. We're gonna get this digit. Um, nine is not here 
because of the 8-9 pair in column 5. So 9 is in one of two places, which means it's not there, and it is here. Uh, 9... Nine can't, uh, yeah. <laughs> Nine can't go here because you can't put six ones on this diagonal because that would break box six this time. So nine has got to be, it's not here, it's not here. Nine's got to be in row nine in box eight. Nine's in one of two places in box seven. So all we've got to do now is to hopefully get some sort of restriction in box four on nines. Yes, and we have. It's just, it's just, there's some weird symmetry. There's some weirdities going on here. But it's the same logic again. We can't put 9 on the 13 diagonal. We can't put 9 in this square because there's an 8-9 pair in the row. So I think 9 is in one of those two squares in box 4, which means it's not here. And it must be in this little square. Which hasn't actually resolved all these eight, nine pairs that we've got. Um. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> so what do we do now? We should... Maybe I can do more with the orange cells. Um. So let's think about that. The, the maximum value of these purples on the 55 diagonal, if we just make them all nines, that seems to be possible. So that would be five lots of nine, which is 45, which means those squares add up to 10. Now, if those two squares add up to 10, what do those two add up to? So if they're both nine, they both become eight. Oh, we've already looked at that. They become 7. So 10 would go with 7, and we get 17. If, if we minimise these... Oh, yeah, OK. Everything we rob from Peter we're giving to Paul, aren't we? So as if I change this square to an 8, that becomes a 9. So this... These two squares need to be slightly higher, but these two squares need to be slightly lower by the same amount. So that these add up to 17. Um, don't see how to use that. Maybe we've got to use the odd digits somehow. I've not even looked at those yet. Ah, okay. The ones in the top row, C1 and 9. So these squares have got to be 3, 5, and 7. That one's got to be 3, 5, and 7. That sees 1 and 9. Um, oh, hang on. Maybe they all have to be. Oh, they do. Sorry. Right. OK. We've done so much work with 1s and 9s that these odd circles now are all 3, 5s, and 7s, I think. These two are, because they see a 1-2 pair in the row, and the 9, so those are. These see a 1-9 pair in their box. These see a 1-9 pair in their column. So all of these squares are, are three fives and 7s. Ah, it's gorgeous. Right, OK, now we're, now we're cooking with gas. Because now, look at, um, look at what's going on down here. How many three, threes, fives, and sevens can you put in those three squares of box six? Well, the answer is one. That's the maximum I could put into these three squares. What's the maximum number I could put in of three, five, and seven I could put into these three squares of column nine? Well, I can't put, I can only put one in again. So the maximum you can put in those six squares is two of the digits three, five, and seven. Well, these can't be three, five, and seven. So this must be a three, five, and seven. And look, look what this does. Well, it's doing all sorts of magic. We've now got a three, five, seven triple in the row, but we've got to, we've shifted the one into this position. We've shifted the nine into this position, and that oopsie, um, that looks like it's doing some work over there. 
Is it doing more work than that? Yes, it's doing the work here. So, so it's done a little bit. Look, no, it's done more than that. That's a nine now by Sudoku. How many nines have we got? The answer to that is plenty. Um, how many ones have we got? Can we resolve these last ones? One, yes, look, one is now forced into this position, which is in an orange square, which resolves it in box one. One, can we keep that going? Don't know, it might have impacted on that diagonal though. Uh, just, try, just trying to see what the thing is I should be looking at here. Um, let's check this. So we've now got 17 here. So these add up to 14. So this square is a five or a six to go with the eight or the nine at the bottom of column five. Yeah, this is lovely. And now we can reapply the logic on the ones again. Because the one can't be in the orange, and it can't be here because of the one two pair, there's a one in one of these two squares, and that means that we can get the one in box nine. Now we've got seven ones in place and just an X wing on ones in columns four and five to finish off with. Um, We've got something similar going on with nines, look. So, eight is now restricted in the middle box because it's got to be in one of those two squares. Uh, oh, and look at, if you look at the um, central row of the grid now, We've, we've approximately placed all of the odd digits. So those squares have got to be two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. It's never too late. Me and my radio trucking on through the night. It's something like that. Three, five, seven, nine. Oh, I'm well, not going to remember it. Um, there's a torrential downpour going on outside. I don't know whether you can hear that or not. Um, anyway, I'm getting distracted. What does this mean? So, we've now learnt more about this orange square. Maybe that's what we think about next. Um, yeah, and we can limit this orange square as well, look, because now we've learnt those squares add up to 5, so these add up to 8. So this square is either a 6 or a 7. And we've got 36 at the moment on this diagonal with the four nines. We need 19 more. Uh, so this can't be 8 because the minimum I can make those two squares is 14. So that would break our 19 total. Now, in fact, this can't be 6 either because the minimum of those is 14. That would still get me to 20. Oh, good. Right, OK. So actually, this square is totally forced. Because if this is 2, those squares have to add up to 17, which they can't do because this can be neither 8 nor 9. So this square is a 4 out of nowhere, uh, which means we can tidy up some of our 2, 4, 6, 8s. Um, and this what else can we do? So now... Now we know those two squares add up to 15. Um, but didn't we, didn't these have to add up to 17 overall? If that's true, these two can't be double six. Look, that's beautiful. So look, if I'll need to check this because I can't quite remember why I thought this, but I think we concluded that these orange squares had to add up to 17. Well, given these add up to 5, that means those add up to 12. Well, you can't double 6 that, so it would have to be 7 and 5. So why did I think these had to add up to 17? Oh, that was the robbing Peter and paying Paul thing, 
wasn't it? That was I was looking at this diagonal, and I worked out that those had to add up. If those added up to ten, those added up to seven, and any adjustment to that just had a, a sort of equal and opposite adju adjustment on the other side. So these do add up to seventeen. So this is a seven, and this is a five. which which is nice because now I can just complete the diagonals that's got to be an 8 because we know those added up to 15 I can't remember what these needed to add up to um, it was 7 I think let's double check so we've got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 yes we needed 7 so that's a 2 that's now a 1 this is a 9 and we are off and running again so now Oh, that's a nine, look. Um, oh, it's the same down here. I keep missing these symmetrical dispositions of digits. So now I've done all the ones, and I think I've done all the nines. But I haven't done all the eights. Let's look at eights now. Um, eight has to be in one of those square. Oh, no, it doesn't. I've got two eights there. Eight has to be in exactly that square, in fact. Eight's in one of those two squares in box three. I hope my roof works. I know it's absolutely torrential outside. Um, right, don't get distracted. Assume the roof will work. Um, Okay, we're going to assume the roof is going to stay on and we're going to try and solve the puzzle. So, hmm, okay. Uh, eight's in one of those two squares. Look, eight has to be in one of these two squares. No, I can't quite see how to use the eights. Maybe there's another digit we can use. Um, twos, maybe. I've not looked at twos for a while. Yes, two. Two goes straight in the grid down there. Straight in the grid over here. Ah, uh, it doesn't go straight into box three. But it does go straight into box six by the power of Sudoku. Straight into box five, which gives us an eight. Which places an eight over here. Oh, this is just gorgeous. And all of a sudden, no, I haven't done the eights, but I, I'm doing better than I... Oh, I'm going to be able to do all the eights. Eight must go here by Sudoku, and eight goes there. And now I've done all the eights. Let's return to the twos. Um, yes, they keep going as well. Two goes here, two goes there. I've now done all the twos. Right, so now we need to pick a different digit to look at, because I think we've done ones, twos, eights, and nines. Uh, I was about to say 7, but 7 actually is an odd digit. So maybe I think about even digits. Do I 4, maybe? 4. Ah, yeah, I can do 4. Look, 4 has to be in one of those two squares. So therefore, 4 has to be there in box 5. It has to be in one of two places in box 2. Um, 4 in box uh, 9 has to be in one of two places. Now look at this 4. It's ruling a 4 out of that square, which means 4 is in one of those three positions in box 8. And I don't know, I haven't got a scooby-doo which one of these is correct, but I can see there is now no 4 in those 6 cells. So the 4 in row 8 must be in one of these positions. Um... Oh dear, no, I think we Oh no, we haven't run out of gas. This 4 pencil mark here is placing a 4 in box 3. Uh, which... I guess that means 6 must be in one of those two squares. Oh, this is just incredible. So the even digits are just giving plentifully, basically, because now 6 has to go there. Yes, where does 6 go in box 5? It's got to go in one of those two squares. Now where does it go in box 4? It can only go there, which means 6 is placed in box 6. 
Um, okay. Now what do we do? Can we keep this going? I don't know is the answer to that. Si yes, I can get a little bit of a restriction on six in box seven. Look, those sixes are pinching it into this domino, which is placing it in box one, which is placing it in box three, and place yes, placing it in box uh, two, which means that's a four. Placing four down here, placing four over here. How many fours have I done now? The answer is many. That's a four. Yeah, the fours all get done. I don't believe it. Now, six is six is fixed in box five. Six is fixed in box eight. Six is fixed in box seven. All the sixes are now done. Right, now we are starting to get somewhere, aren't we? So we've got threes and sevens into those squares. Um, that's no longer a six. So I, I think I've done all the sixes and I think I've done all the fours. Right, so am I just left then with threes, fives and sevens, am I? Uh, that might be right, I'm not sure. Let's let's be careful about this. So threes, fives and sevens into those squares. This is a three, five or seven. That must be a three, five or seven. I think I have. I think I've done all the other digits. Um, I suppose I can audit that, can't I? Ones, twos, eights and nines. I know I did. And I have done fours and sixes. Yeah, so we are just left with pencil marking threes, fives and sevens into everything. Sorry, I was being slow. Um, now, do we know anything about... We, we have got sevens. There you go. They are not seven. That's not seven. Have we got anything else? We've got... Um, seven. We've got a five here, look. Oh, so that's a three. Sorry, I didn't spot that. So all of a sudden, now we've got a five, seven here. We get a three in box six. And this is going to be how we finish the puzzle, I think. Now we've got three is in one of those two cells. Three in one of these two squares. Uh, hang on a sec. So I had a five. I've only actually got one five in the grid. I've got. I really only got two threes. Uh, how many? Seven? I've got one seven. Oh, good grief. Right, okay. So maybe this is not quite done. How am I going to resolve it then? Ah, there's got to be a five in one of those two squares. So there's no five here. So now, no, that's just the mirror of this square, isn't it? I'm not sure is the answer. We might have to colour these. Um, let's do that, in fact. Control A, let's remove all the colouring and let's think about colouring maybe these squares in the central column because they seem to be the most restricted. Um, let me just stare at this for a second. Ah, no, although I don't like the look of that because if whichever one of these I colour, what you're trying to do when you colour a Sudoku is to force another cell to be that colour. Now, I think whichever one of these I colour, I can't force anything to be that colour. That's no use at all. So maybe maybe the fives and sevens here will be better. That would... That, this would force that. No, that's no good either. Oh, sorry, this is probably completely a red herring then. Um, that square is the same as... Ah, hang on. That square is the same as that. So that. We can get rid of the 7 from that. I was wondering why there was a 7 in here, but there shouldn't be. That square and that square are the same. Uh, 
Oh, and that square and that square. Ah, this might be a better spot. Let's look at this square. So this square, because it's ruling itself out of this domino here, which is a 7 and a 3 or a 5, has to go there. But look here, this square is also ruling itself out of those two squares. So that square is the same colour as it, which... Oh, maybe that does that run out of gas as well um, maybe not because this square now is forced to be that square because it can't be those two squares so those two are the same color although we don't know which of those of course is green because it could be either um, ah but I tell you we can do a trick here that is a good idea what color is this square and the answer is it's a third colour because it's not green and it's not purple. So this square might be the key to the highway, so to speak. We've now got this square, which is not green or blue. So that's gone purple. This square now is blue because it's not green or purple. That square is blue because it's not purple or green. Um, that square is green now. So, can we find more? <laughs> I'm looking for squares now that are sort of pinched again. Yes, I've got another one. This square here has to be blue because it's not purple and it's not green. So that's blue. Which means that must be purple, which means that must be blue. Oh, this is gorgeous now. Look, look, now that has to be blue. And now I've done it. I've done it. In fact, I think I could have done it there because, look, these two squares have a 5-7 option. This has a 3-7 option. Well, I can't put 3 into blue then because those two would have to be 3, which they can't be. So blue is 7. That is what I think we're learning here. So we can just fill, fill all those in. That's really beautiful. Now look, that square's become a 5. We, don't, ah, we do now know the colour of purple is 3. Um, or the value of purple is 3. <laughs> You know what I mean. Um, now that's become a three. Now we must know that green has become a five. Um, this has become a seven. So hang on. So this must be, though, both of those now have to be blue. Therefore, we should probably continue with our coloring just to keep track of what's going on. That's got to be green. Um, that square's down there is 5, and therefore it's green. This square must be 3, and that's 3 in the corner. That's 3 in the spotlight, losing its religion. That square's becoming a 5. We've got all sorts of musical connotations in today's codec masterpiece. Um, that's going to be... <laughs> concentrating more on colouring than I am on actually filling the Sudoku in, which is probably not sensible. That must be purple. Now, have we done purples? I can see we've done the Sudoku. Have we got nine purples? We do. Have we got nine? No, we don't have nine sevens. We do now. And we need nine fives, which we've also not got. That's extremely negligent. Um, there. I think this is the solution. Let us click tick. Yes, it is. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Love that codec. As always, your puzzles are a complete joy. Let me know in the comments how you got on. Um, it, yeah, I mean, there's quite a bit to do at the start of this one, to be honest. The, although it's not too hard to see that there is a sort of max min going on between the 13 and the 15 and the 55, and it turns out the 31, unscrambling that wasn't terribly easy. But it was doable and it was a lot of fun. So thanks for watching and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.